Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. I am an artist living in beautiful Vermont, USA, and I have a lot of questions. So I engage the minds of the people that I meet, poets, writers, artists, I explore what's inside and share it with you. My name is Ricky McEachran, and I am eager to know. When I first moved to Vermont, my temporary home wasn't the warmest. So each morning I headed to change yoga for a heated practice and the warm personality of this episode's guest. In addition to owning the yoga studio, she operates Polly Schmidt Equestrian, training horses and teaching dressage, a lesson with a yoga influence. It is an example of lifelong passion becoming a big part of someone's life. On this episode of Eager to Know, I speak with Polly Schmidt about yoga, mindfulness, and working with horses. Polly Schmidt, welcome to Eager to Know. Great to have you here. I want to tell everyone how I met you and why I have you on the podcast. So I moved here from Chicago to Vermont. And when I was in Chicago, I was like a gym guy. Like I would wake up every morning at 5 a.m., go to the gym, and it was all weights, weights, weights. And I had a bunch of guys that I used to work out with every morning. And that kind of became, uh, you know, fitness has always been a big part of my life, but like the weights in the gym was a big part of my life. So when I was moving to Vermont, I knew that I was moving to Jamaica, Vermont. So the first thing I did is I looked up a gym because I wanted to like make sure that I carried that over. And there were no gyms, but there was a yoga studio. And I have done yoga forever, but it's never been my primary fitness. It's something that I would do once a week, you know, twice a month or something like that. So I realized that I was going to have to make it be my fitness thing. So I went to Change Yoga in Jamaica, and you are the owner, and you're also the teacher, and you're also such a wonderful spirit. And I really appreciate that. And I got to know you through yoga and outside of yoga. And I wanted you to be on the podcast because I wanted to share, I wanted my listeners to be able to experience your wonderful spirit. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, I was like, oh, there's a new guy. Who's this guy? <laughs> you know, we have such a small community. And um, then a new person comes in. And it's like, oh, well, let's see what, you know, he's all about. And it takes a little while to get to know people. But as soon as you came in, it just felt like you were part of the studio. Like, for me, um, the people that come make the studio. Mm -hmm. And so now I've got this new guy, and he's making this energy. and, And then finding out a little bit about you with your Heart, which I'm so interested in and you do podcasts and then then you're there and you're part of the whole group so it's so nice to have you join us and come into Jamaica this tiny little town with a tiny little studio there's about five ten people in there yeah so one of the things that's unique about change yoga in Jamaica Vermont is that it's a very limited number of classes like you only have like 10 classes a week so it's once a day and um and it's a, a very much a small community so when i was first moving to vermont and i didn't know everyone i got to know everyone really really quickly and it was a it was a wonderful yeah. way to start my day um so let's, let's talk about <clears throat> yoga and what what is yoga how does that incorporate into your busy big life yeah so yoga is probably the most important thing that i do for myself even though i'm a teacher or a leader for other people but um so yoga has helped me just calm down relax you know uh steady steady my thoughts my mind so i can actually do what i want to do totally (laughs) really Um, So that's like the most important thing. I think I was just running and I've been into yoga for a long time, maybe 25 years plus, I don't know. But um, 
before those 25 years, <laughs> the mindfulness wasn't there, the calmness, the steadiness. Um, I loved life but it was just a little chaotic for me. Yeah, so I like what you just said about that it allows you to do what you want to do yeah. because I very much relate to that. Um, I also am into meditation and a lot of the conversation that I hear about yoga and meditation is that it makes people, people do it because it makes them feel better. And I don't relate to that because I'm not looking to necessarily feel better. I'm looking to be more productive. Like yeah. I have a, I have all kinds of things that I want to get done and do in the world, but my thoughts and feelings get in the way. Yeah, so And so, so yoga is a way to allow me to sometimes in meditation. Sometimes it, I have to. It makes me feel worse. Well, yoga doesn't, but sometimes meditation <laughs> can. Um, but it definitely allows me to be more effective and more yeah. more productive. Well. Uh, I guess it helps you clear your mind mm -hmm. and because those thoughts are coming at you all the time and you're like, oh, should I do that? I don't know if I'm good enough. Can I? Uh, you know, and so you're thinking about that. But so if you feel good physically and, and, and mentally and eating well and meditating, then you pretty much know who you are and what you want. Mm -hmm. And as soon as those those thoughts and you get away from whatever, take you away from the meditation, like take you away from, oh, you know, you get anxious or whatever it is that's causing this feeling of, um, I can't do it or fear or anxiety. It, it's just amazing how the yoga gets you into the right direction, the right you know what to do. Yeah. No, I know that you had a history, like you grew up skiing, yeah. which, is very, which is very physical. When did, so you had an athletic aspect to your life and also horse riding, yeah. which we'll talk about. But when did yoga come into the flow of things? Oh, that's interesting because when I was a ski racer and I was young, my sister was a yogi, you know, so she uh -huh. told me to meditate before the race right so I'd sit down and I'd crunch up into a little ball and I'd just breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out so I could clear my mind yeah because I had horrible equipment yeah. <laughs> back then right who's ever hand me down I could get so it was kind of scary because my equipment wasn't so good um, but and then I'd take off full blast and it wasn't like I was thinking about my bindings might pop off or yeah. something. I could be really clear and focused on what I was doing. So that's where the meditation, I don't know if that was the beginning of it, but that's helped me a lot in my focus for my sports. And then that the meditation turned into a, a yoga practice? Yeah, well, that's the interesting thing. I had um, scoliosis and okay. I was in a body brace mm. as a kid. And I had to do like exercises all the time for my back. And really um, the yoga was a huge part of me not wearing a full body brace as a kid because I was moving the muscles around on my body so my spine wasn't getting more and more crooked. It was really tough as a kid. Having that it was in like eighth grade, ninth grade. Was it a grade. was it a removable brace type yeah. thing? Yeah, so it was like from here down to here, and they, my mom would put her knee on the side of my body and crank it tight, and it would straighten your spine. Right. So like I was trying to do these sports with <laughs> this, <coughs> excuse me, this huge brace. It was so hard. <coughs> but they told me um, if I did yoga and I swam that I wouldn't have to wear it. So that's what got me into that. And the meditation of like, oh dear God, please, <laughs> please help me, my spine, you know? Right. So that became a practice of praying back okay. then. Okay. So now, I think that's when it first started, the yoga. Okay. Now, what kind of sports were you in besides uh, downhill skiing? Were you involved oh. in everything? It was, there was horse riding, yeah. downhill skiing. So and I was a ski racer and downhill and cross-country running. 
I love that. Yeah, I know. We, we, I, we used to run into yeah. each other at Jamaica State Forest running. Uh, like nobody else in the park but oh. us, but that's great. I got to tell you, I miss Jamaica State Forest because I live here in, near Bellows Falls, Vermont, which is where I live, where, where I live now. And um, there's really not a good place to go running here. And when I was living in Jamaica, I used to go so nice. at Jamaica State Forest, and it was like four mile. It's two and a half miles. So up nice. And back. I went cross country <sighs> yesterday, oh. all the way down and back on skis, and the river was running and yeah. beautiful. The snow. Yeah. Now you're you have a very uh, strong personality, uh, and we, you were obviously like that as a kid. And you grew up with a, in a big family. Yeah. How did that work? How did were seven. you? Oh, seven kids. Mm. Wow. Okay. How now? Where do you fall in that? So I'm the sixth kid. Oh, so the second. Yeah. Okay. And so I pretty much kept my mouth shut, you know, because you're the sixth kid. You okay. just do your job and. Okay. <laughs> but um, strong personality came from my mother. I think she okay. was a pretty strong personality. Right. And yeah. so you've always been, you've always been sort of an outspoken type person? No. <clears throat> I think uh, going through intensive yoga training, it brought me out of my shell. Really? Yeah. And, and I could really speak the truth of, like, because I would just not say anything, you know. And now mm. I feel like it's helpful for people to know what's happened to me in my life. Or it's, it's... um I don't need to stay clammed up so much. Isn't that interesting? Like, because now I'm like outgoing and totally outgoing. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I was quiet. And as you a were kid. So, so you feel like yoga training unlocked something. Yes, it kind of wow. gave me some um, insights in myself and what my fears were, and you know, and slowly. Nothing comes quick in yoga, yeah. but slowly became more powerful to speak the truth of what and who I really am. Well, that's or be who I really am. Yeah. Now, and not worry about what people think or, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. Getting better, still working, yeah. but. Um, you know, it's funny. I personally am just realizing how much of a factor that is with me yeah. is what is. Not people pleasing, but just that whole general wanting people to like you. Yeah. It's a whole genre of things that go on in our brain. Um, and I'm just recently realizing how big of a factor. I never thought that I really mattered. And I'm realizing how big of a factor that was for me yeah. um, and is for me, but kind of kind of getting over it. Um, and the community of yoga helps you, right? So you're in your own world in there doing your poses and we're all together like working through this together uh, at least i feel like we're together even though i'm the leader and you're the student we're, we're there sweating and working and really working through our shit you know yeah. and then hopefully learning to let go like oh i can't do this pose oh that pose isn't for me oh what does she think I can do that you know those yeah. kind of things but then you kind of work through them and you're like oh I can yeah and there's so many parallels with yoga and life because yeah. like you'll start doing a pose because anything to do anything it's a lot of work and when you yeah. start out doing anything you can't do it and the only way to do it is to keep doing and doing yeah. and doing and with yoga you have these crazy poses that you think I'm never going to be able to do yeah. this and you have to stick with it be, com be comfortable with the discomfort and breathe, yeah. which that model is applicable out in the real world. Love it. And then eventually you can make, pro you know, you can make progress. The other thing that I love about, it, I love about yoga that I also love about painting because I'm an artist and a painter is that I know that yoga is something that I will never master. Like yeah. I will never run out of runway of new things to learn. In the same way with as a painter, I never have to worry about... Yeah. I did it. How about I'm done. With life. It's with life. Yeah. It's like life will never master it. Yeah. It's always a right. We're right here in the middle of our life. And yeah. What's next? Who knows? But there's so much. You know. Yeah. It's exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting. So I'm glad. I'm so glad that I stumbled on change yoga. Yeah. Let's talk about horses. Um, oh, yeah. Horses are something that 
I don't know much about, I don't have experience with. I feel like they keep kind of coming into my life. Um, my my niece is a really big, really into horses. She's a, a jumper. I think we talked yeah. about this. Um, tell me about your history with horses and tell me about your history with horses. So I kind of grew up on a farm. So my mom had horses in our backyard. So I always had two or three. You know, it's kind of funny. I was just so lucky to have that. And then my friends had horses, and so I've always had horses. And it's just been a huge part of my life. And I don't know, like, just being around horses, uh, it's just one of the best things for me. And there's so much. Um, what, is, what is that? Because I hear that a lot. I, being around horses, I uh, well, there's so much to it. Like, now I'm so involved in horses. I have so much horse in my life um but being around horses i think it really brings you into a place where you have to step beyond yourself like so, okay say so you got this i i trained dressage horses big big horses i don't know if you saw them when you came but they're big and so these big huge horses and then there's this little person holding this horse and you have to build this relationship and understand even though those horses can't talk, we have a communication going. And, and I think that's probably one of the most powerful things is like being able to communicate with an animal and train them and work with them and both of us respect each other, you know? And was that something that you experienced as a kid when you were around horses as well? Yeah. Or you did, so you immediately yeah. Yeah. realized. Yeah, right away. Oh. I was lucky. Um, someone, I was like 10 years old, a little kid, and someone asked me to take care of their four horses. And so I'm walking and they would step on my feet and I was like, okay, I just had to do this all by myself, you know? And so I learned. I learned how to work with them, you know. <laughs> you had to learn. Yeah. By like survival. Right. So, are you a writer or a, more of a caretaker? Like, what, what is your connection? Well, is it more r writing or just like? I am a trainer, so I'll train horses and help people get their goals where they want to be. So mostly dressage, but also jumping. So I'll train people to you know, compete or just have a pleasure horse or whatever they want, you know, Okay. or train the horse. So, and I used to sell them too. So I'd train a horse and sell a horse or. Is it kind of like marriage counseling, like with the the, the horse and oh. the owner type oh, yeah. thing? <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> you know, I, I'd say the biggest factor in um, training is getting my student to go beyond fear. Okay. And I find that in yoga also. Mm. So those two things are like the biggest thing is like they need to trust. They need to trust me, <laughs> number one. Like, And then they need to trust their horse, you know. Then they need to trust themselves, you know. Mm. That three things working together. Right. It's important. Um, and... I think I get that, you know, with my clients. I get to the point where they feel comfortable and, you know, and the horses, I get to that point with the horses too, where they're very comfortable um, in their jobs and environment. Now are you... Hopefully I do that in my yoga class. Yeah, no, de definitely <laughs> yeah. in my experience. I, tr I mean, I don't really try to do that in particular, but I, that's what happens. Would you say that working with horses helps you understand people better or would you say the other way around like kind of knowing people helps inform horses you know understand horses better or are they completely unrelated I think it's separate separate you know humans have silly fears like um maybe something happened to them something and they hang on to that their whole entire life like they got on a horse once and the horse took off so they're always fearful about getting on the horse so this that happens but horses have real fears like um something moves in the barn and they'll jump so that's something that's real like right. something should spook a horse because right. that's how they survive so you know working the minds of two different animals 
the human mind is way more complex than yeah. the horse mind. Okay. Yeah. The horse mind is simple and, yeah, more easy to understand a horse. Although I've been working with humans so long that I think I get them too now. You think you've, you think you finally got? Yeah, I kind of understand. I see. I see when they're fearful, or I see when they're anxious, or I see when they're not even connected to nature. Or, you know, so I can see where they are. So yeah, you should all ride horses. I've ridden. I've ridden horses once. Um, rode a, I rode a horse once. We had a um, like a group thing where uh, a bunch of us went to a place where you could ride horses. And I was so scared because yes, I, see, am, I was really scared. So they gave me the little tiny horse that was for the kids. Yeah. And that was the one that I got. Yeah. So I think it's a breakthrough for um, us as humans to establish a relationship with the big horses, right? Mm. It's just, it's something... Uh, we should all do is like challenge yourself like it's scary let's step into that let's go into that feeling of fear and see if I can get through it Good. and the other part of it is your physical body and how um, you need to be in line or in tune with the horse like if you're tight and holding on like this the horse feels like a rider's like a brick on him or if you're relaxed and moving so that's another part, and and just being able to use your body mm. on a horse, like you're strong and flexible, so it might not be so challenging for you, but um, then the fear would come in and the shoulders would get tight or something like that. So alignment and relaxation or, you know, the the physical practice of yoga too, not just the mental practice of yoga is important for the, for, for the horse riding, for, for, yeah. For the horse riding. Yeah. Yeah, I know that people always refer to horse riding as like physical activity, and I never thought of it in that way. I know, I mean, funny. I, I mean, I think I sort of do, but I kind of just think you're riding a horse. No. But, uh, but I know that I'm well, wrong, so I'm glad that you were able yeah, to explain this. I mean, if you came and rode with me, you'd just like all your muscles. You wouldn't believe how many muscles you would use. But at the same time, you have to be so relaxed and and being able to move with the horse. So that's a real art. So you can, know? I come, can I come ride? Yeah, you have to come ride now Aww. after this podcast. All right. Well, yeah. then I'll, I'll give listeners an update okay. on how it was. And I know that I will be in great hands yeah. because the last time I went, I don't necessarily know if I was in good hands. But if anyone was going to uh, you know, guide me on a horse, I would feel 100% confident with you. Thank you. So that's great. That's good. Well, this has been great. I'm glad that um, we got to kind of even get to know each other. I mean, we know each other a lot through yoga, and we've been mm -hmm. to a couple parties. Yeah. Um, so potluck parties here in Vermont, especially in the summer, is everyone shows up with everything from their garden. <laughs> and it's incredible. Yeah. So um, we attended a couple of those, which were a lot of fun. And, uh, but no, I appreciate you coming on. And um, I really, like I said, I really wanted everyone to experience Polly oh. and um, you know your wonderful energy. Well, thank you, Rick. You're very welcome. Very great. My name is Ricky McGeckrin, and you have been listening to Eager to Know, the podcast. If you haven't already, please go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Join me next week for another Eager to Know podcast.